Hey everyone, my name is Devon, I'm a third year medical student at Imperial College London. Before I get into today's video, I just want to spend a minute uh, thanking you guys for all the support that you guys have put towards my channel. Uh, it really means a lot. And after I advertised on Instagram yesterday, I know that a lot of you guys are new. So welcome to the Devify family. I hope you guys are enjoying your stay. What I've decided to do is a three-part mini-series talking about some of my money-saving tips. Now you guys might be asking why I didn't make one fat video and the reason is I have like 25 different tips and if I put it all into one uh, video it would have been like 25 minutes long which you guys probably don't want to see and I just don't want to make at least yet. So what I've done is I've divided it into three portions. The first video which is this one is going to be talking about shopping uh, whether that's groceries or online shopping, food and also coffee. Uh, video number two is going to be based around banking and discounts, uh, student discounts. And video number three is going to be talking about transport, bills, subscriptions and rent. So this is the kind of layout that I have. Now if I think up of more stuff, I might make sort of another video, but hopefully that won't be the case. And so with that said, let's jump straight into the video. I hope you guys enjoy these tips. Lego. From personal experience, a lot of my monthly expenditures actually goes towards groceries so this is probably one of the most sort of crucial parts and um, simple ways where you can uh, easily save some money. Where I live there's a Tesco Express, a uh, Sainsbury's local and uh, if you have a YouTube channel called uh, Tomorrow's Medic then there's also a little Waitrose uh, right outside my house and it's super easy to just uh, walk outside your house and within minutes you're inside one of these stores. It's super convenient to just buy the stuff and go back home very quickly. And let me tell you, I fall into this trap all the time. It's just so convenient. But the thing is, these shops not only have less variety, but also charge you a lot more money. So if you had the time, I would say to maybe walk 20 minutes or so, or depending on how far it is, obviously, just walk that little bit further and go to the bigger version of these stores, bigger Tesco or the bigger Sainsbury's. You'll find a much more variety of, of food and it will also be cheaper. And don't get me started on convenience stores. They just charge so much money for the same thing. It costs maybe two or three times more to buy a bottle of milk and it is a complete waste of money. Just, so just don't do that. <laughs> the next thing I recommend you guys to get is loyalty cards. Now they're super easy to get and they're free. If you shop at a store often, you're more likely to accumulate points. Like, look at this for example, I got two pounds um, for shopping at Tesco for a whole year. But seriously, some things are worth it, like Nando's, but definitely do your research and um, see whatever works for you. My next tip is to use online cashback sites like Top Cashback or Quidco. So I'm going to try and explain to you guys quickly how it all works. First of all, they're perfectly legit and the figures I'm going to use are more hypothetical. Obviously things vary depending on what brand you purchase from. So for example, let's say ASOS, okay? So you sign up for Top Cashback and you click on ASOS. They tell you, okay, the cashback rate is 5%. So when you go to ASOS, it takes you to the ASOS website. That's the real ASOS website and you do your shopping as normal. And the price you pay will also be normal. Everything will be done as you normally would. But because Top Cashback bought traffic to ASOS, ASOS will give them a small share of the price purchased. So because you spent, let's say, £10 on your, on your clothing, ASOS will give Top Cashback 10%. And now that 10%, Top Cashback will give you half, which in theory works out to be 5% of the total value purchased. Now, you wouldn't get this money straight away. It normally takes about 3-4 months to clear. Uh, some brands take earlier. Uh, and can be done in like two weeks. So it really depends. And then in a few months, once everything's verified, this money goes into your account and then you can do whatever you want with it, whether that's withdraw it or keep it there or it's real cash, which you can spend on whatever you want. So there's one sick thing though. I've got a referral link for Quidco. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them, but if you go via this uh, link and sign up and make your first purchase, I think you have to spend over five pounds but then you get £10 for free and I get £10 for free as well. So we both profit. I've also got a link for top cashback, but unfortunately I think the bonus only goes towards me and not you. But either way, definitely sign up for both of these accounts. The only thing I'd say is to make sure that you don't click on both of them and access uh, the website because um, you won't get any cash back. Uh, they recognize that the traffic has came from both sources and then they don't get any money and then you don't get any money as well. So don't do that. 
and make sure you compare the rates and whichever one is offering a higher cashback on the brand you're currently shopping at, for example, Amazon or ASOS or something, then go with that one instead. Just remember, it does take three or four months usually for the money to appear in your account. But you do find out if the purchase is successful within like an hour or so. Okay, so the next thing I'd say to do is shop at uh, Lidl or Aldi if it's available. They tend to offer prices which are a lot, lot cheaper. And if there was one nearby to, to my accommodation, I would definitely do that. But uh, Imperial is very posh. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't have these uh, peasant uh, shops. But if you have them nearby, then definitely go for it. I think uh, Asda is also quite cheap. Uh, for those of you guys watching in the US, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't really know the shops, go to Best Buy or Walmart or whatever uh, you guys do. Although a friend of mine says uh, to not cheap out on pasta, so don't do that. Um, I just had to get the point across. We had a little argument about uh, whether pasta is considered student food or not, so I'm going to do a small little poll above. Make sure you answer that and hopefully we can enlighten her about whether pasta is considered student food or not. Uh, I'm probably, probably going to die. Right, so my next tip is to meal prep. You probably saw this coming, but uh, meal prepping is super easy. It's really convenient and it saves a lot of time, especially if you make loads of portions and you can easily divide them up. So if you're cutting or if you're bulking, you know exactly how much you're eating every time. But even if you're not doing either of those things, uh, then it's super easy and convenient anyway. So you might as well. Now, if you don't know how to cook, don't worry, there's loads of websites and YouTube videos that show you simple recipes to make that you can easily do in about 20-25 minutes. Uh, who knows, maybe I'll make a meal prepping video in the future as well. What I'd recommend is to go to Ikea and buy one of those glass Tupperwares with a lid. I think it will cost you about £3, buy a few of those. And what's really sick is that you can warm food directly in that because it's glass. The next thing I'd say is to make your coffee at home. I know for a lot of people it's very difficult, but the thing is, spending £4 on, on coffee is really, really expensive. But I, I definitely get why people do I even do it sometimes. There's just something about uh, sipping your coffee, uh, sitting in a lecture, half asleep, trying to focus, you know, and it just makes you feel like you're productive even if you're not. So I'd say buy one of those chili bottles and uh, make a coffee at home, buy a coffee machine if you're into that, or just buy filter coffee. Uh, you know, there's, there's different things you can do, but in the long run it will definitely save you a lot of money. So the next thing I'd say is to only go shopping once a week. If you're going into the shops every other day, you're probably going to overspend. And this used in conjunction with my next tip, which is um, to make a list of what you want to buy uh, before you actually go shopping, will save you a lot of money because it stops you from making impulse purchases. And also going uh, shopping once a week also limits how much you can actually buy at once. The next thing I'd say is if it's available to split up your big uh, tech purchases or whatever purchases you're doing into monthly installments, it's becoming increasingly more common and easier to do. And a lot of the time they actually offer 0% um, interest rates. The money that you don't spend right away, you can either invest this or put this into a savings account. However, the counter argument to this is that if you're not spending this money right away, you're more likely to then over purchase and buy something else and in the long run you're actually going to be spending more but in that case you have to be a bit more responsible the money that you sort of don't spend right away because you're paying in monthly installments you should invest this or put this into a savings account and that way you'll save more money the final thing i like to say is to not buy hyped up stuff now before you hype beast dislike the video i know this is a bit controversial but you guys do you and go do your purchases but for those of you guys that aren't, ask yourself these questions. Do you, do you really need the thing? Are you going to be using it in a few years? Does it really, really make you happy? If the answer was yes to any of these, then okay, then go for it. But if it wasn't, then I'd highly recommend that you don't do it. Because these things tend to go out of style and fashion in a few years. And they're more of a, a short-term sort of happiness purchase, if that makes any sense. Right, so this brings the video to a close. I hope you guys have enjoyed these tips and have found them helpful. This was part one, and just to reiterate, there will be two other parts to this uh, series. Part two will be about banking and student discounts, and then part three will be about uh, bills, subscription, uh, rent and transport. I hope you guys did enjoy this episode, and I would love it if you guys could drop a like and comment as well. And if you're new to the channel, then make sure you subscribe. With that said, I hope you guys have a good day. I've been Devify, and I am out.